Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wait What We're Talking About podcast, episode 169. My name is Brett, aka Enigma911, and you can catch the podcast live over on twitch.tv slash Enigma911. Uh, just check it out over there. Usually live Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can join in the chat, join in on the conversation. We'd love to have you in on all the fun. But if you can't catch it live, that's a okay. Go over to YouTube and podcast services the very next week where it's broken out topic by topic and put as one big video in MP3 for your amusement on the following friday last but not least any way you can help and support the show whether it's likes comments shares whatever it may be reviews it may seem small but it helps the channel grow helps the show grow um so we would love and appreciate you for that so another solo episode hello um and quite the dichotomy of topics today <laughs> we're gonna be talking wrestling and we're gonna talk about mario um so yeah we got two very different topics today obviously if one floats your boat more go for that but um hopefully you're along for the ride so let's start with wrestling but more the wrestling video game side of things we're going to be talking about wwe 2k23 more specifically we're going to be talking about their gm mode um if you're new to the show the general manager mode the gm mode is pretty much the part that i've spent this year's game and last year's game probably the most amount of time uh has been spent in this mode so essentially what it is it's kind of like a fantasy booking game mode (laughs) you're pitted against either a human player computer players whatever combination you may have and you try and book better shows than your opponents in order to gain more fans money resources um by the end of the year and you will win or achieve milestones goals along the way um in victory (laughs) so with gm mode it was prevalent in the smackdown versus raw series from 2006 i believe until 2008 um then at least on the wwe side of things gm mode kind of went away AEW tried their hand at it with a mobile app which was fun for a while um and then the mode finally returned with uh, 2k22 and 23 being 2k's second attempt at the uh the play style the game mode whatever you want to call it and with their second attempt has come a lot of changes some good changes some i wouldn't say bad changes but maybe some things that still weren't implemented or are missing from the mode and i just kind of wanted to talk about the mode really give it its flowers because it is really good and it is really fun um and then just talk about maybe some changes or updates that i'd like to see whether it comes from the team now in this year um or things they can adjust for 24 in the following year and the following release uh that we can get so let's talk about the changes that they have made with this year and like i said this is their second attempt um so they kind of learned what was good what worked what didn't work in 2k22 um, through their own gameplay, through up, up, down, downs gameplay, through obviously fan interaction, and they kind of tweaked, modified, and adjusted things to make this mode better overall, in my opinion. So first things first, which is probably the biggest surprise, is the mode went from a two-player mode, whether it was you or a person or you against the AI, to a four-player mode. So that was a huge surprise that now you can play with three other three of your friends if you want to whether it's online um or sit together on a couch um or you could play against multiple ai there could be any combination of it obviously you don't have to do the full four you could still do two you could do three whatever combination you do want and it adds just a whole nother layer of chaos uh into the game mode um circling back to the smackdown versus raw series when it was available in 06 and 07 it was only that two-player mode so one person was raw one person was smackdown and you would go against each other that way when they implemented in 2008 they added the ecw brand or the third brand or not the third brand the uh what am i thinking of the rehash (laughs) of ecw that everybody's got their own opinion about but they added that to 2008 because ecw was like heavy featured heavily featured in that game so you had the three there and at least by those standards it made the game 
way more difficult because <laughs> the CPU and the algorithm and all that stuff just was very difficult to kind of manage. Not from a gameplay standpoint. Everything ran smoothly just as a player. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just my personal <laughs> experience with it. Get thrashed all the time. So with this one, um, just adds another layer of chaos. Obviously, if you're playing with your friends, you ha can have more involved into uh, the story or into the game mode, which just makes it more fun. Uh, whether, once again, it is that online setting or that couch setting, just goofing around, having a blast, booking your shows and whatnot. So with the option now for players, we do also get a few more GMs, and we do get, uh, I think, a show or two added into the selection for your show. So you still do have Raw Smackdown. Those are going to be your staples. Um, unfortunately, we lost NXT UK. That did kind of shut down this past year, so that makes sense. But you do have NXT Black and Gold. You have NXT 2.0. And then you now have WCW added as well. Um, as for GMs, we kept Adam Pearce, Sonya Deville, um, Stephanie McMahon still in there. We lost William Regal, but he'll probably be back. I don't know how contracts work in his video game stuff, so he could be an update um, as 2K23 did last year with a free update to GM mode, um, or he'll be next year. Um, I think Shane McMahon's still an option. You now have new GMs in Kurt Angle, Mick Foley, uh, Eric Bischoff, Xavier Woods, and Tyler Breeze. Um, you can still use a custom superstar as well. So a plethora more of characters that you're able to choose from, uh, similar to last year, all with their power-up cards that are specific to them that you can't get any other way, and same with the shows uh, from there. So cool additions there as more options become available, obviously, to players, changes things up, modifies it to make it more <laughs> hectic and whatnot. Um, in terms of their cards... I think for the most part, their cards stayed the same. Um, there were a few that swapped, as well as the regular generic cards, which we'll talk about after, that they implemented in the game. There's a lot of new ones there and the modifications. Um, I think shows as well, those stayed the same. So Raw still, Vito is three stars. SmackDown, I believe, still is morale. No, SmackDown. What was SmackDown? I think SmackDown's morale. Maybe that was Sonya. Mm. Uh, NXT still championship matches are boosted once. NXT 2.0, which is a new show, allows you to buy three free agents at half off. WCW is a legend. I think you add five weeks onto their contract. Um, and as for the GM, Stephanie McMahon still has her double money. Uh... Creed and Breeze have some crazy ones. Uh, Tyler Breeze will allow you to add 20 stamina to all of your members of your roster, which is clutch. Um, Woods, you can steal a superstar from another show as long as they're not a champion, I believe. Um, that might be random. No, I think you can pick who you steal. Uh, but that one's crazy, the cheat code card. Um, Bischoff has... Something with money <laughs> related. Fully injures, I think, two opposite or opposing superstars on a brand you select. And then uh, Kurt Angle kind of got the short end of the stick, in my opinion. He gets one free week of charity promos. Their results may be boosted, but I could be remembering that wrong. So we got some interesting cards in play for them. Uh, Breeze has been the one that I've particularly kind of gravitated towards so far in my gameplay, whether it's been offline or on stream. Just that stamina card is really powerful, in my opinion, just because your superstars do get so tired um, over time. And that's kind of a nice reset, rehash, um, whether you're halfway through the season or at some point where you need to really build up to kind of keep your lead or catch up. Um, that one's been awesome. I'd be curious to see how hectic uh, Xavier Woods or Austin Creed's card can be. That one seems like a more arcade style, especially if you're playing with friends. Just be like, oh, you son of a bitch, you stole, you know, whoever. Um, as you could in the older games where superstars would reach out to you and you could 
you know, negotiate with them, steal them. Still happens in this game, but I feel it's a little bit less often that that does come up in the emails, uh, which we'll talk about later. Um, so let's stick with cards. Let's talk about the new cards that they did add um, into the gameplay. Um, so the power cards, as they're called, are kind of like modifiers that you can use throughout the season, throughout the games, to help you or to help your show or to help you kind of sabotage the other players. So they're, for example, if you're going to sabotage other players, you can make their match types or arena booking cost double. You can veto super, certain superstars so they're unable to be used that week. You can veto champions. Um, you can, I feel like there's another one. Those are the big three. Um, and then there's other ones that can make you better. So whether it's contract negotiations, you add contracts to superstars to lengthen their contract, kind of wane off renewing it and buying it. Um, you can add different match boosts or ratings boosts to sp certain match types, Hell in a Cell, Steel Cage, whatever it may be. Free advertising, free book or arena, those all stay there. Um, some new ones that I mentioned kind of or at least alluded to there are new match types which is very nice we do now have multi-man matches thank goodness not that i use them all that much but it is nice to have the option if you just need to throw people in there uh into a match so you do now have triple threat you do now have fatal four away and they also added a plethora of different match types from a backstage brawl to a steel cage to a tornado tag to a submission match which i would say is probably the biggest addition just because of what that certain match type allows you to do or the bonus you get from it. So different match types um, from 22 were branded pay-per-view match types. So if you used it during a pay-per-view, you will get a little bit bonus, whether it was fans, reception, your show ranking, quality, whatever it may be. And in this game, they still have that where they have the branded show bonuses for this certain match extreme rules for extreme rules something simple like that but in this one the newer match types also have different factors that kind of play into it so i believe i'm not, don't quote me on all these ones but like one match type gets you ten thousand fans um but can up the chances for an injury or if it's a last man standing match the winner will get morale the loser will lose morale if it's a submission match which is the most i would say clutch in terms of an additive that they added from 22 into 23 a big concept of the game is rivalries it's pretty much your bread and butter you want to establish rivalries throughout the four weeks uh, that you're building to a pay-per-view and at the pay-per-view you want to blow off that rivalry or kind of have it come to its conclusion Rivalries that are level three, rivalries that are level four will finish, quote unquote, at that pay per view, and your fans will show up, show out for it, quality will go up because there's that conclusion to the story. Sometimes, whether it's your own build or player interference or computer interference, <laughs> where superstars are vetoed or they're hurt, whatever it is, outside factors. Or inside factors factors <laughs> nonetheless sometimes don't allow you to finish the stories there and in 22 you could get trapped in a cycle where okay i built edge and seth rollins in a stage four rivalry we're going to pay it off at hell in the cell oh this player was aggressive and they played it so seth who's my champion cannot participate in this match um, and his rivalry with Edge can't be paid off. And you'd be stuck until the next pay-per-view, let's say it's SummerSlam, for another five weeks of trying to maintain this rivalry, which, granted, could be easy. You just don't book them if it's a stage four because there's no higher that they can go. But the payoff is their popularity is going to take a dive because they're not on TV. So what do you do? You can do run, run promos. You can still attempt to keep the rivalry alive with call-outs or matches, but you run the risk of that rivalry going sour with your audience where they just don't care, they're not as invested, and then your return on investment later on is not going to be as well because, well, they're sick of seeing this match 800 times, i.e. 
or a la a Brock Lesnar Roman Reigns. We don't need to see that 20 times. Um, so you could run the risk of that or the gambit with that in 22. And in 23, with the additions of the submission match, allegedly, we've had some problems with it. Hopefully that bug gets fixed. But with a submission match, you can end a rivalry at any time. So obviously, whether it's a pay-per-view or it's a regular week-to-week show, you book your superstars in a submission match or whatever rivalry they're at, whether it's a four, whether it's a two, whatever it may be. Allegedly, at the end of the match, the rivalry will end. It will conclude. And with it concluding, whatever your level your rivalry is, two, three, four, maybe even one, um, you will gain 10, I think it's 10,000 fans per level of rivalry for concluding. So you have a level three, there's 30,000 fans right there. And that rivalry is concluded, so you can move on from there. Um, so it's a really nice tool um, that they did add that is great because, once again, you're not stuck in this booking hell <laughs> because of an offensive card played. Granted, part of the strategy, but it is nice for the user to have that flexibility of like, okay, I get it, I got to adapt, and I go on to the next thing instead of just this constant, not downhill, but it doesn't feel like it gives you a chance to have that rebuttal in terms of strategy. Um, so the addition of the submission match, along with the others, clearly, but the rivalry ender, huge, in my opinion. Also another thing that makes it nice if you just happen to have more rivalries than the five allotted for pay-per-view matches. If you were doing really well and maybe you spread out the wealth and somehow you got six to seven rivalries, if you're really crazy, going at the same time as backups or whatever, you can finish those rivalries off. It can boost your regular shows and kind of make it a little bit more flexible, organic when you need to move certain pieces because of stamina, because of rivalries, because of contracts even. Whatever it might be, you can be flexible with it. Granted, your planning is (laughs) there and present, but very cool that they added that and at least gave that option to players um, to to end it. Um, Another addition that they made uh, was the mid-card titles. So in last year's edition, you had access to both world titles for the men's and women's rosters. And then with the first patch, I believe it was the first patch, they added the tag titles into the game mode. Great, because it actually gave ta- tag team wrestling meaning in booking and not just like, I don't know, I'm filling the spot. Uh, the tag titles were added. Unfortunately, the mid-card titles were not. So in 23, they have added those in. So we have US for Raw, Intercontinental for SmackDown. You have the Hardcore for WCW. NXT, both brands, I believe, have the North American. Um, So nice to have another title that you can kind of implement into your storylines if you would like to there. So now you have a chance of five titles uh, on the line. Men's World, Women's World, Women's Tag, Men's Tag, and your mid-card title. It's great. So adds a little bit more spice and excitement to your matches if you decide to book it that way. Um, Let's see. And then a few more additions that they uh, have made. I kind of alluded to emails earlier where, you know, people in the old games... You could steal roster members and stuff like that if you wanted to be chaotic. Uh, Emails are pretty much the same from last year. However, they have added some variety there as well. Um, It seems like superstars can get a little bit more pissed quickly (laughs) if things are not going their way in terms of morale. There's a little bit more of, uh, I guess, consequence would be the right word. If maybe the booking's not right or you're not listening to your superstars, They'll just either up and leave and quit their contracts um, or they're really trying to haggle you for money, whether it's a bonus, whatever it might be. Um, So you get a little bit more, I guess chaos is the best word, at least variety where it doesn't isn't just same old, same old week after week. And it's kind of autopilot. There are things that you need to watch out for with the morale being a little bit more important. Uh, in terms of emails and those factors coming in in terms of like, oh, well, I just lost Otis because he's 
doesn't want to be part of my brand anymore. And those adjustments need to be made. Um, there are a few more examples too of some interesting factors that play into GM mode in the emails. Um, I haven't seen it too much, so it may be far and few between. Um, but twice there has been an email about a, uh, I think it's like a physical therapist coming in and you can pick two superstars and they will work with them for, I think a week or two and it will like boost their stamina or recover a lot of stamina. Um, if you choose to, or you have the freedom to choose one superstar from that email or none of them, whatever you'd like to do. So I've run into that twice. And then there's been another one about a movie deal that I happened to get on stream. Uh, there was a superstar that was really popular and Hollywood came calling and they're like, oh, we want you to be in this movie. But the superstar, you could let the superstar do the movie for three weeks, four weeks. I don't recall. Um, and if you let them do the movie deal, you got like a million dollars and you have the chance of their popularity going even higher. Um, but obviously you get the choice if you're like, oh no, I really need this superstar around. You can deny those or obviously if you think you can be flexible with it, let them go and do that. Um, I'm curious to see what other emails there are, uh, see what other factors do come into play. If they do have any crazy stuff like that, there's been a few other ones too where like a random Joe Schmo will be like, oh, I'm a social media influencer, hire me for free and I'll boost your fans and whatever. And it's like, is this a scam? <laughs> but it must add something to it. So I'm interested to see what other emails do come into play um, and not being, at least at this point, because it's still relatively new. I know the game released a few weeks ago, but um, it got to a point in 22 where it was like, oh, this email means they want a main event. Oh, this one means they want a bonus. And we're gonna get that as well in 23. It just still at this moment feels fresh, unique, duh, because it's new. So I'll be interested to see if there are other emails and what factors they will have into playing into the game and the strategy we'll have to make going forward. Um, and then I would say the last big one, big change that is great, similar to the submission match where it just was like this was a really big pro in terms of building the game mode or you know fleshing it out is multiple seasons now when they first announced it from our knowledge because we can only go off what we know of like the previous titles with smackdown versus raw this meant oh they're gonna allow us to play multiple years out which is kind of a yes and kind of a no so in 22 you played you had the option. You could play 15 weeks, like 25 weeks, and 50 weeks. And if you played 50 weeks, it was the whole calendar year, minus those two weeks. I don't know what happens off season. And you could play it mania to mania. Great. Um, in this year's, it's still mania to mania, but it's only seasons are only 25 weeks or 25 shows. And you book the four weeks, you get a pay-per-view, and I believe there's five of them. That's how math works. <laughs> so you book Mania to Mania that way, and that is your first season. And your game can go, I think, 10 seasons. It may be unlimited. I haven't gotten to that point, so I'm not sure. But let's say hypothetically 10 seasons. So you're doing 10 years worth of this game in one continuous playthrough. In 22, it was regardless of what length you picked, you played it, you got to the end, and it was like, this is conclusion, finish, put a pin in it, we're done. With this year and the multiple seasons, it allows you to keep playing. You know, Sometimes you really get the momentum going right at the end. You're like, ah, I'm losing everything, or it's, it's over, so I can't do anything with it. And with this addition of multiple seasons, it makes it continuous. So even if that, you know, you had a rough start, you could claw back, you can make something new, excuse me, and push forward from there. Because sometimes with the uh, 22, 22's version, like 
There's a lot to learn. How do I get fans? How do I book things correctly? The drama curve, this, that, the other thing. With the multiple seasons this year, it allows the players kind of to adjust a little bit better. However, another exciting change with the multiple seasons, which granted, I can see both sides of the argument, but to me it's a lot of fun. From season one, you go mania to mania. You do your normal draft. Draft your 11 superstars, 12 superstars, whatever it is. Draft them, those are your permanent roster members. Then just like the previous title, you can get free agents, you can get legends, great. You book them through that first season. Once the season concludes, the game is going to see, okay, who's in top, let's say if there's four players. Who's in first, second, third, fourth. The season concludes, there's a winner based on those, those rankings, and you are able to keep certain superstars. Your roster is wiped. So if you're in first place, you get to keep three of your superstars. Second, you get four. Third, you get five. Uh, fourth, you get six superstars. So depending on your ranking, three, four, five, and six people you get to keep, re-sign, depending on morale and you know who you pick um you'll have more you'll have an um, jesus you will have the option of more than three it will give you maybe nine to eleven superstars that do want to stay um and you can pick from them depending on where you placed how many you keep then from there you do a whole nother draft and it's based on how the previous season went so what i mean by that is if I had Johnny Gargano on my roster and I boosted him up, he was North American champion, he got really popular at the time, um, but his stamina was a little low or something like that, I think it's just based on popularity because of the season it kind of refreshes stamina. If I boosted him up and got him popular, his contract will be more expensive come the draft if I didn't re-sign him in that initial picking. And you'll see that across across the board with the draft of like, how did Raw book their superstars? How did SmackDown book their superstars? How did whatever? And you'll see that fluctuation of a chart um, or the roster depending on where they are. So the people who went undrafted the entire time may be towards the lower end and be cheaper superstars. Or if you want these people who are quote unquote established to kind of help yourself in the next season uh, who are more popular, who are going to gain more... Uh, fan notice you can get them at a higher investment so it's it adds a whole nother layer of it of like oh crap i really want xyz superstar but they're taking three hundred thousand for the whole year that's a lot of money <laughs> and, and you do that because you want the popularity but maybe your initial roster size is so is smaller because of the cost of everyone else or you can go the opposite route and draft the the less expensive superstars, but then you gotta do the whole thing again of building them up and getting popularity and stuff. It's just a really cool feature, which with, you know, Papa Griff and I playing, for example, last year, we played so many different versions um, of the game based on our choice. We actually completed campaigns or unfortunately freaking campaigns crashed on us. I can't tell you how many times we got to the first pay-per-view on a 50 week gameplay and just <laughs> shit itself um we did a lot of drafts we always enjoyed the variety of it of like just mixing it up and which superstars we would have or wouldn't have either in the draft pool or on our teams um so it's an exciting time when it does come to the draft of seeing who is there um so i, I do enjoy the multiple seasons i enjoy the the you know the curveball of the the redraft um and adding some variety there um, is very exciting. Um, so multiple seasons, great. We haven't had any crashes or scares yet, so I'm glad they figured out those bugs as well. Um, and yeah, just it, it's been a good time with multiple seasons. Um, before I move on to the cons, uh, I do want to shout out one other change that they did make for WWE 2K23 in their GM mode. And this is an option that you can play around with you don't have to play with it, um, but so far through my playthroughs, um, we have had it on just because, once again, it's another variety thing and kind of makes it a little bit more arcadey in a 
terms of like an excitement way and not just a simulation type thing um, is the shakeup cards. So at the end of each pay-per-view, you do your matches, you have a great time, you know, you hopefully get good results and the things you want. You will have the option at three shakeup cards. And these are ranked in bronze, silver, and gold cards. They're similar to the power-up cards, but they only appear at this time. And they have three different time periods. They either have a match length, so for the next 10 matches, blah. Um, they either that, they either happen instantaneously, or they happen throughout the rest of the season. So depending on what you choose, these shakeups are kind of nuts. There are some that re, uh, recoup 75 stamina for a superstar. There's some where you book a certain superstar of your choice in a match, you get 10,000 money every match they participate in. There's some where take your most popular superstars and bring them down to a 65 and then six random people will get boosted up to 85 or something like that. They're all really like obscure and crazy. And it's just, once again, it's another layer that just makes it so much fun. And in terms of strategy, it's like, <laughs> like trying to figure out what puzzle pieces you want to use in terms of your strategy, your plan, whatever it is. It's exciting. Um, I don't know if there's a way where you can see if you're playing against AI, like what they have chosen. Um, you may be able to do that in the new GM assistant, like kind of thing you can check out, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it's another cool layer into the gameplay. Like I said, it is also optional. Options are always great, depending on how crazy you want to get, how hardcore, I guess, you want to get. Um, but the shakeups, in terms of my opinion, another fantastic addition. Um, just <laughs> like I said, the crazy, not stipulations, but factors or way things can kind of play out depending on what you choose um, is there. And the thing is, too, with the three cards, with the ranking system, you're not guaranteed to get like, oh, a bronze card, a silver card, and a gold card. You could get three bronze and be like, oh, well, I guess I'm picking this. Um, so another fun addition there. So let's talk about the cons, or at least the downsides of this year's and kind of last year's GM mode. There's not too much, so I don't want to be like, oh, this is the worst thing ever. But there's a few things in terms of user experience, I guess you could say, that could be a little bit better. And um, I mentioned the multi-man matches. Very very happy they added it like from my personal experience haven't used them much but knowing that you have once again the option to book a triple threat if you want to or book a fatal four-way and still build rivalries from them um, is great the only downside so far based on launch in those multi-man matches you cannot book any titles to be defended so whether it's a world title or a mid-card title those cannot be defended so a little disappointing I hope they patch that in where you know they can do something like that it would just be nice especially for if the beginning you know you need to establish who your North American your IC your US championship is and if you want to have it where I don't know who I want my champion to be and kind of you know get that random element into the the game a little bit more and then build off of that would be fun um rivalries are still only one to one or tagged tags so at least in terms of rivalries i get why they wouldn't do the world titles on the line between cody rhodes seth rollins and finn balor like if only two of them are feuding and then the belt goes to the third guy and then your rivalry is not screwed but at least loses the title mechanic i guess that's also your booking you could have just not done that um but it would be a nice a nice thing to have. Once again, options. So a small thing there. Um, you still can't look at your past results. So if you wanted, after your match results all go through, you're booking, and then you're like, oh, crap, who won the last match? If you're not super crazy and write every little detail down, you can't go back and look at match results. You can't go back and look on statistics of like where your show did well what your show didn't do well what your fan gain was what your money monetary gain was 
you can't go back, look at these results, and be like, oh, this worked, this didn't work, and go from there. A little disappointed in that, but granted, second crack at it. Maybe things will change down the way. Um, contract lengths. Um, with the draft, we know those people who have dra- we have drafted. We know they're permanent, quote-unquote, not really. We know they're permanent for the season. It would be nice to know once you're re-signing free agents or legends they always come to you and like hey my contract's up at the end of the week and if they decide to stay i would take ninety-one thousand to stay and sign a new contract great how long is that contract is it from my understanding it's just like okay let's say i sign carmelo hayes for 10 weeks 10 weeks comes up he wants a new contract to my understanding based on last year's title it's another 10 weeks I'm signing him to, but it would be nice at least to know like during that email process because maybe I have a lot of re-signees, whatever it is. It would be nice to know, okay, he wants 91,000. That 91,000 is for five weeks, 10 weeks, whatever it might be. I assume it's the same amount of contract length as what I hired him as, but it's just one a tiny little thing that would help the user experience overall, in my opinion. Um, And then last but not least is the trophy system. So with the multiple seasons, they kind of added a trophy system and a Hall of Fame goal for you as a GM. You need to get 10 trophies and then you qualify, I think, for the Hall of Fame status. And that's overall how you win. And that's fine. I like the additives of the GM challenges, another way to get power cards, and then get so much revenue, get so much fans, different ways to get these trophies. But the trophies outweigh everything. Usually with GM modes of the past, along with last year, fans outruled everything. If I have 3 million fans and my opponent has 2.8, Three, two and 2.75 million fans, whatever it is, you know what I'm getting at. Um, I would be winning because I have more fans. It doesn't work that way in this game. It all comes down to trophies. So if as long as I have more trophies than my opponents, it doesn't matter that the person in third has more fans than the person in first. And while I get it, because that's this year's objective is the Hall of Fame status. I wish that was either A, a little bit more clear that trophies are the end-all be-all or somehow they could like average out or kind of equate the fans still into the victory overall. I guess fans do equate in terms of like how many overall fans you got with the GM challenges or the lifetime challenges. But they kind of almost fall second fiddle when trophies mean everything. So you could just put all of your focus into your GM challenges. Granted, that's only one trophy for doing the five GM challenges each season. But that strategy or that focus kind of is more on that and those those challenges can be anything book eight normal matches book five backstage brawls you know gain so much revenue or have so much revenue in your bank it's a wide variety of things that can be easy or cannot be easy but it's weird that that takes all of the focus instead of maybe the drama curve or your fan growth i don't know maybe it is balanced enough and i'm I've just noticed that the trophies are big, but I don't know. Maybe it kind of coincides or like is more symbiotic, (laughs) for lack of a better term, um, than I think it is. Um, But I've just noticed that, that the trophies outweigh everything. And in terms of playing catch up, it can be a little difficult. Not saying impossible or complaining of like, oh, I got to strategize better or it's not easy enough. No, it's just one of those things you're like, okay, I'm... I lost a season and because person first won the season they get an additional trophy it's like okay I'm playing catch up how how do I do it like I got to figure out a way to 
get more trophies while being down one or two trophies already because of the season win, whatever it may be. Um, it's interesting. Interesting factor to think about. So while I like the, the multiple seasons, the trophies, I like them. It just not a hindrance but something to be aware of i guess um in terms of like oh that's what i should have actually been aiming for i guess this entire time and go from there um and then to wrap up the topic the discussion i know we're talking a lot <laughs> about this mode i just love it it's a lot of fun that's the thing overall this mode is a lot of fun i want that to be known some other changes i would make um papa griff and i talked about this like the addition of the new gms is great um, we just want more, you know, once again, options, add ECW in there. Why not? You added WCW obviously this year, add ECW in there, add Paul Heyman as a GM. Uh, you get Teddy Long in there. I'm not sure if we want Laurenitis in there. Probably not, but I'm just thinking of who's been passed <laughs> GMs. AJ Lee would be cool, but that's never going to happen. Vicky Guerrero's a little bit on the, yeah, right now in terms of recent and recording, but that's another option. Um, I get why you're not going to have Triple H in there. You could add HBK in there, especially next year with him doing, you know, the NXT now and GMing down there. That would be a cool addition. Um, I guess all in all, it just comes down to the power cards. What do you figure out or how do you factor in those? What's new? What's exciting? For ECW, obviously, you can kind of throw in the extreme aspect in there. Um, maybe stipulation matches for one week get you a higher rating or fan interaction. That could be something compared to the charity and the money for one week or the network deal. Um, so that's, hey, there you go, 2K. ECW, for one week, any stipulation matches get a small boost. You know, that's pretty good. Obviously, you got the regular power cards of one specific match gets the boost. This one can be every match, similar to NXT's, where every championship match gets the free boost. There you go. Um, I don't know in terms of other shows what they would do besides ECW. Um, you had NXT UK, but now with that being kind of kaput, you uh, you could have it, because obviously ECW and WCW aren't around anymore. Um, <laughs> do you really go balls to the wall, put a velocity in there, or main event? Obviously that's still a thing uh superstars or uh sunday night heat <laughs> you could you know just have some fun with it um but yeah you could have some fun with that uh maybe you could put flair as a manager i know he was raws for a little while um but just more characters more options we we joked about regal earlier he'll make his return probably next year um so that would be something and then i would say just one more change that i want and it's, it's another one of, like, user friendliness and just makes things better. Um, rivalries are great. You know, it's a fun way to book it, make stories, whatever. Tag teams get the short end of the stick. Similar to 22s, where the, the tag titles were not initially involved until that first patch, where the tag titles got involved both for men's and ladies'. In terms of rivalries, there is no, still, there's still no way, and I think I had this criticism last year, there's still no way to build tag rivalries other than matches. There there needs to be a way to build that rivalry in the promo section. You know, the call-out is a great tool to use in promos. John Cena calls out Brock Lesnar. There's an opportunity to boost that rivalry a level or if it's a steel cage match by two levels now another great addition tag teams don't have that available to them the steel cage is obviously still an option granted but there's no call out for tag teams if you do judgment day finn balor damian priest against imperium giovanni vici and ludwig kaiser you can do a call out promo of finn to giovanni but they're going to start their own single rivalry it's not going to be a Judgment Day versus Imperium, and they build. We need that for tag rivalries. It's, I don't want to say it's too difficult, but just giving the option, giving the tool to allow the player to grow that rivalry, similar to any other rivalry, I think needs to be added. 
even if it's an option of like, once again, the same example, Finn calls out Giovanni. That's fine, you can only do the one-to-one -one interaction there. Give us an option of like, okay, Finn is calling out Giovanni. Do you want this for a singles rivalry or a tag rivalry? You auto-fill tag teams based on our booking already. You can kind of use the AI, smart programming, whatever the hell you are using to auto-fill those tag teams already for us. If you really needed to and you are able to do it, just have us pick all the superstars too. Like Finn and Damien, call out Imperium. Checkaroo, you know, it books way more superstars. If you do obviously do the two calling out the other two, it takes up two slots, but that just comes down to the player of making those adjustments using that strategy. Um, if that is what is required of the player, okay, you want this tag rivalry to build, you unfortunately can't use these two superstars anywhere else besides the call out promo, something like that. It would just be very helpful for us. Um, so yeah, I think those are just some changes I want to see. We already talked about the mid-card titles, multi-man matches, stuff like that. Um, but all in all, 2K23 and the additions they have made to GM mode is fantastic. I loved 22's mode, just obviously being a return from you know the SmackDown vs. Raws of old. Um, and being 2K's first attempt at it. Out of, oh boy, I have no, how, no idea how many hours, probably 100, something like that, of 22. Probably three quarters of that was GM mode, and based on the 30 to 40 hours I've played of 23 so far, probably 95% <laughs> has been GM mode so far in terms of playtime. It's, it's a great mode. I love playing it, whether it's solo and just playing against AIs or playing against, you know, friends and family and the chaos that will ensue there. It's a great time. It's a great mode. I know it's not for everybody, um, but I love that it's made its return. I love watching other people play it. Uh, shout out Top Up, Down, Down. Um, having them go against each other and seeing the excitement there. I just want the game more game mode to, you know, keep building, keep adjusting, keep growing to the next level and uh just be a fun time yeah so gm mode everybody i love it i love it